Hey guys, it's Ben with Myers Woodshop. Today we're going to go over this DeWalt planer. I'm going from the OEM knife style that's in there, and I've decided to take the leap and buy the Shellex replacement cutter head. This has the helical head with the insert knives. It's supposed to be a lot quieter and a lot smoother of a cut. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up, replace everything inside, show you the process of that. I'm going to run a board through before I do that so you get the decibel level and the smoothness test uh, on the OEM knives in there. And then I'll run a board through after so you'll get to know if there's a difference in the uh, sound and the cut quality. So let's open it up and switch this out. So we got this rectangular box and then when we open it up we have a paper with the instructions and a website to go to to go ahead and see how to change out your cutting head. Uh, it comes in some foam and when we take off the top piece of foam we can see the cutter head right there. We have a Torx screwdriver which we'll need for changing out the cutter tips. And then we have a box for the extra cutter tips. There's about six or seven in there in case some come break or broken or you have some break later on you can change them out and that's it inside the box plus the awesome upgraded by Shelix sticker so the first step is taking out the Torx that comes with the machine and then the other one we're going to use later on but the one with the machine, we're going to take these four bolts on the top plates along those silver parts. And they don't come all the way out. They just twist until they're up. And we're just going to slide the top part right off. Now we have three red handled locking screws. We're going to go ahead and loosen those to where they come out. And that's going to remove the fan shroud that collects all the dust coming off the cutter head. So we'll just lift that up and that unlocks from the blower. It's a great time to vacuum out your machine at this point. Now we have to remove the knives from the head. We're going to use that Torx that came with the machine and we're going to loosen and remove every bolt along all the knives. So this is what you don't want to do is stick your finger in there and lift up the top showing you the incorrectly first but the back of that torque screw has magnets to remove all of the pieces so flip it over and touch it to the knives and it'll pull those things right out so you don't have to cut your fingers so now we're just going to rotate and we're going to repeat that process taking out all those screws here I'm doing it with a uh, drill speeding up the process you can see again the proper technique taking out with the back magnets and we're going to rotate to the third and final knife we're going to take all of those bolts out to get to the last knife next we have to remove these two bolts here it's holding in this spring part that holds it down these are Phillips heads and they can easily strip out in fact one of mine was stripped out because this was purchased used so I had to use the Phillips on one and then I had to use some vice grips on the other. So be careful with this when you're taking it out. These are really easy to strip. Once you remove that last screw, you can see here it's really stripped out for me. Put your finger and hold apply pressure there because there's a spring inside. You'll see when I lift this up, there's the spring. This was a little bent. Not really sure how much it's working, but be careful you don't lose that spring. Next part is to take the handle off. We're using the Torx that came with the machine. Get the middle bolt, remove the bolt, and then slide the handle right off. We have four screws on each side of this panel. We're going to remove those with the Torx that came with the machine. Now the panel will just slide right off. 
reveals you the chain. So we have a spring here, we need to remove that. I'm using a hook to gently pull it down. We don't want to spring it back and lose it. We can just leave the part dangling. We have a Phillips head screw holding that on. Remove that piece, that tightens the chain. Be careful you don't remove that bolt with it and keep it together. Now we're going to have to remove the sprockets. We're going to use the Torx that came with our cutter head. It fits in the sprocket head. We'll just remove these two bolts. Then you can just slide that chain right off. Now we have to remove this rubber belt, this pulley. We used a uh, flathead screwdriver to kind of push it to one side as we rotated and slowly came off. Took a little bit of uh, elbow grease, but it finally comes off. And we didn't damage the belt at all. I have to remove the nut from the head and we're using a 24 socket. We're putting a soft piece of wood in the head so it doesn't rotate as we pull the socket. You gotta have something in there to stop the rotation. Again, a good time to vacuum up the dust. So now we're going to slide the pulley off and we got to be careful that we don't lose the key. You can see there's a little notch and on the pulley it's got a little key a fit in there to keep it from rotating. So be careful you don't lose that part. And we're just going to remove the bushing from the shaft. This is the hardest part by far is removing these snap rings. I'm fortunate enough to have a really small pair of pliers and a second pair of hands to help me get this out with an awl. But if you have a snap ring remover, you can get it done a whole lot easier. But the pliers worked for us. I'm just wanting to show you how difficult these things are to get out. It took a lot longer than what I'm actually showing on film. Once you remove that thing, be careful not to damage it. We're going to replace it. But pat yourself on the back. That thing really sucks. So we're on the other side. We have three bolts we need to remove. We're going to use the Torx that came with the cutter head to remove these three bolts. Now we're just going to slide that cover right off to reveal another chain. Oh great, more snap rings. These were a whole lot easier to get off. They're a lot smaller. They weren't as tensioned. But again, it took three sets of hands to do it. A snap ring tool is definitely recommended. But we did get it off with a pair of pliers and a hook. Now you have to repeat that process for the second sprocket. Watch us struggle to get it off. Disconnect the spring from the tensioner. Again, you can just leave it sitting right there. It won't come off. And then we're going to slide those sprocket and chains right off. Remove the washer that was behind the sprocket on the right shaft. And now we have three socket head screws that hold the gearbox in place. We're going to remove those.
pull the gear head box back, but do not completely disconnect it from the machine. You don't need to, and it'd be a whole lot of a pain to put it back. So you just turn it sideways and just let it rest right there. It will be out of the way. From the opposite side of where the pulley was, tap the head out using a piece of hardwood. I'm using some oak and rubber mallet. And then there's somebody on the other side ready to pull it out. It took some gentle persuasion, but it finally did loosen up. Once the head is removed, slide it through the bearing housing. Now we have to remove the helical gear from the end of the head. The hex end of the helical gear requires a 6 millimeter wrench, but it's very easy to round off the corners. So you may find it easier to remove by carefully grabbing the round base of the gear with a pair of channel locks. It came, us, came off for us just fine using the 6 millimeter wrench. So we remove that from our old cutting head, and now we have to replace that on the matching side of the new Shellex cutting head. Your model may come without the bearings. Mine came with them, so I didn't have to take them off and put it onto the new cutter head. Now we just go ahead and get our 6mm wrench and tighten it back down on the new cutter head. Alright, so depending on which version of the cutter head you get, you have the smaller one, or like I got the OEM version. Smaller one will fit right inside these side holes because it's about the same size as this. The downside of that is uh, the markings on your machine will be off, but the upside is you don't have to do anything else other than shove the shaft back in. Now on mine, I got the OEM size. So the problem is with the cutter heads installed, it will not fit through the opening for the shaft. So we're gonna have to go through and remove each one of these tips and then slide the shaft in and then reinstall them. Uh, you have to weigh if that's worth it to you. I didn't wanna have any of my markings off. So I think it is in the long run, especially if this is gonna be the last cutter head I ever buy for it. So let's get to the sucky part. So here we are removing every single cutter head. And this video is sped up 50 times. Now we're literally just reversing the process. Make sure to put the gear head in first and you're gonna slide it through this opening. We have no cutting heads on this. We're gonna use the same method of hardwood, hammering that shaft back in to place. The bearings will go tight around that plastic housing. Once we know the shaft is in place and will spin freely, we're gonna replace the gearbox. Again, we never disconnected it fully, so it should just turn back into place. And we're gonna replace the three hex bolts that hold it to the machine. Now I'll replace that washer on the right place where the sprocket goes. We're going to replace the chain and sprocket. We never took them off of each other. So we're going to line up the holes and slide it back onto the shaft. We'll replace the spring back onto the tensioner. And now the fun part is putting those snap rings back onto where the sprockets are. It's actually a lot easier to put them on than it was to take them off. Once you do the left side, you just repeat that for the right side. Put the cover plate back on and we'll get the three screws that hold it on and replace those.
Now we're back on the original side, replacing the big snap ring. This was the really hard one, but it was actually a whole lot easier to put it in than it is to take it out. This is the hardest part of the installation. We're going to put that washer back onto the shaft, and then we're going to get the pulley and the key. Here's the key. We're going to place that into its slot on the shaft, and then we'll put the pulley back on, aligning the slot with that key. Now we'll replace the nut back on. We're going to need to put a piece of wood back on to the shaft because it will spin when we use our uh, socket to tighten it down. Now we're getting the poly V-belt back on and make sure it's aligned with the top and bottom pulleys. This just took a little bit of hand strength and patience. We're going to replace the chains and the sprockets back on where they went, aligning the slots with the sprockets. And we'll get the two screws and replace them to hold down the sprockets in place. Now we're putting back the idler arm back onto the tension area. So we're going to place that in and then put its Phillips head in where it goes and tighten it up. And then after that we'll put the spring back onto the idler arm. Now we just put the cover plate back on the side. We have four bolts that will attach it. So we'll replace those and tighten them down and we'll be done with both sides. Now we'll put the handle back where it goes. Now we reinstall the cutter rotate lock plate that has the spring on it. Ours was too tight now with the different shaft, so we did some gentle persuasion with the rubber mallet to make it fit, and that turned out just fine. Just remember you have a spring behind there. Then we replace those two Phillips head screws. Again, be super careful not to strip these out. They strip really, really easy. And here is us reinstalling every single cutter head. This is sped up at 20x.
Now that the long part is done, we'll reattach the fan shroud. You gotta put it into the blower first, and then push it down, and we'll get those three red long screws and replace them just by hand tightening. And finally, we'll place the top cover back on and we'll tighten down the final four screws. And that should finish your installation of your Shellex Bird cutter head. Now we'll move on to the sound quality and cut test. The app I have on my phone measures decibel levels, so now you can hear the ambient Alexa, and the vacuum room is 45. On. When the vacuum turns on, you'll hear okay. me say it, and it'll turn on, and it changes to about 78, 80. That's just with my vacuum on. We now have the original cutter head on finishing settings. <laughs> Alexa, vacuum on. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna do the before and after. So one of these is the before, and it's with the original cutting head, and the other one is the after with the Shellex cutter head. We'll see if Pete can guess which one's which. So here is the first one. And here is the second one. That's the Shelix. Shelix. And that is correct. This is the after with the Shelix cutting head, and this one's the before. So you can definitely tell a difference, right? Yep. Can you definitely, definitely. tell a difference? Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Are they both smooth? Yeah, they're both smooth. It's just the uh, this one, the Shelix, is uh, smoother. It's so, a smoother cut. So would you? Okay, let's go through the things uh the bullet points about this so let's say if you're gonna buy this just for sound there was a 10 roughly 10 decibel mm -hmm. level difference on my phone app it was a lower in person pitch. it was a lower pitch it wasn't that high pitch noise that with the original 
it was still ridiculously loud yeah. either way. Yeah. No Especially in my small shop was a 16 yeah. by 20. Uh, you're going to have to wear headphones. Yeah. But and we we ran it at night, which wasn't, I don't know, my wife didn't notice. So, <laughs> uh, But if you're buying on price alone, so the price of this cutter head, I, this is the OEM version, so it's the bigger version. This was $420. This machine itself is $599. Mm -hmm. So if you're buying on sound alone, do you think it's worth it? No. 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 It's. I would say you can add this machine and the cutter head and buy like a 20 inch for a thousand bucks. That's kind of the range you're at, around a thousand. So now I don't think so either. Yeah. Uh, next bullet point would be cut quality. I mean, there's a noticeable difference, but you're already going to run it through the drum sander. For sure. So it's you're not, not skipping a step necessarily no. in sanding. No. So you're not skipping any steps by doing the regular head versus the the Shellex head. You're going to sand no. it either way, and yep. I think you're probably going to start at like 220. This is like a 220. The the Shellex is definitely 220. Yeah. That's super smooth. Yeah. This one's more like a 120. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a little higher. Yeah, maybe a little higher. But. I mean, you're still you're one paper off. Yeah. So I don't think it's worth it on mm. that. Um, no. Nope. So price. No. Nope. Yeah. What am I talking about? Uh, what about the knives? The so oh, the knives, the knives itself. Knives. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing we cannot test in this uh, is longevity of the knives. Yeah. Um, the the only way to do that is for me to come back a year from now and show you. I'm not a production shop. I I'm just a one man content creator shop and occasional projects. Mm -hmm. You know. For some people around here if you're blowing through this thing all day every day and you're going through knives absolutely yeah. worth it yeah because you get four spins on those things mm -hmm. and they last theoretically what I've seen in red they last like four times longer than a knife oh cool but going through if you're doing like reclaim stuff that may have a nail or brads yeah. and you're hitting that what when we opened it up one of the knives already did have some sort of nick or something I don't remember that. I think so. Oh. So instead of having to replace that entire knife, yeah. you only have to replace that one little cutter head. So yeah. that alone... That would be worth it. Absolutely. But you got to be quality. using it a lot. You got to be using it a lot. Yeah. I'm not, so it's mm -hmm. not necessarily worth it. If you're judging it in all three together, yes. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. For sure. I think it would be worth it uh, as long as you're putting out the production. Yeah. Two things I did notice is one, it does seem like it sucks more power to use it. I don't know if you've noticed mm. that. Like before when we ran it, since the knives only engaged every so often, oh, I see it seems like it had a millisecond to ramp back up in the power. I can so hear I've, some people have said that you need to take off less passes per per pass because mm -hmm. it it's it's always engaged with yeah. the, with the new cutter head. So if it's maybe always if you're, cutting. Maybe if you're using it a bunch, like you're just gonna put you know a lot of board feet through there. Right. You yeah. might want to do rough cut. The other thing is that the chips coming out are way finer. Really. I did I did I notice that. that. Yeah. Uh, buddy came over and used it right after on a on a bigger board, mm -hmm. and the chips were like more like a dust, huh. which makes it easier to <clears> suck up through your vacuum, and easier on your vacuum coming out yeah. all that through so there's a difference there so there you go that's the shellex cutter head for the dewalt dw735 that's our opinion how to install it and is it worth it they do make cutter heads for every i believe every single planer and joiner out there yeah and if it doesn't exist they'll make you one we are not sponsored by them. They did not send it to us. I bought this on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to get it yourself. If you have any comments or questions, if you have one of these, leave that in the comments below and we can compare your thoughts to mine. So as always, I'm Ben from Myers Woodshop. I'm Peter Romano. You can find Pete on the Build Guild. He was episode three guest. So if you're not listening to my podcast, go ahead and check that out right here. I'll catch you later. Happy cutting.